We're here in Oxford, in the United Kingdom, and we're down on New Hill Inn Street. New Inn Hall Street. New Inn Hall Street. Okay. And we're in Wesley Memorial Church. And we're talking to... I'm Kate Dobson, and I'm a member of this church, and I have been since 1982. What do you do here, Kate? What do I do? Yeah. I do lots of things in the church, but... Um, English Methodism, British Methodism, is arranged in circuits. Circuits are groups of churches uh, geographically, and I'm a circuit steward. And I'm a circuit steward uh, responsible for staffing, that is for ministerial appointments, deacon appointments, and also for any lay worker appointments, which I think you might call lay pastors in the States. So we're here to talk to you about John Wesley in Oxford. And Indeed. One of the things I wanted to kind of start out with was, uh, how did Oxford influence Wesley? I think it would be truer to say that uh, Wesley influenced Oxford, <laughs> but not from the start. Um, you've got to take your mind right back to Oxford before the Industrial Revolution, almost, before the car industry, before the um, car engine. So a small place with villages on the outside. And um, John Wesley came as a 17-year-old boy from Charterhouse School with a scholarship of 20 pounds a year from his school to be an undergraduate. And that was in 1720. And he did what all undergraduates do. He, he had a fairly good time. He was at Christchurch, which apparently had a bit of a reputation for not being terribly serious. Um, and he worked hard enough and he got himself his BA degree, which was good. And then he decided that he would study for his master's degree, his MA. Um, in 1725, he was ordained as a deacon in the Church of England. His father, of course, was the vicar of Epworth. And his father was also an Oxford man, so he was very keen for his sons to come to Oxford. So, um, John Wesley then became much more serious when he was studying for his MA, and he worked out a great programme of doing two subjects a day every day of the week. So he worked really hard, got his MA, and then in 1726, he was elected as a fellow of Lincoln College. Now, Lincoln College, if you were to be a fellow, you had actually to live in Lincolnshire. So his father did a bit of lobbying, and so did one or two other people, and apparently was very pleased to brag, my Jack is a fellow of Lincoln. If you were a fellow, you got a small stipend and board and lodging, and you were supposed to do some teaching. But it seems that um, soon after that, Wesley went off to help his father to do um, the work of a Church of England minister in Lincolnshire. And he was ordained in 1728 as a full priest, and he's still helping his dad in Lincolnshire. Um, it would appear that Lincoln College at this point wake up and think, hang on, where's that fellow Wesley? He ought to be here working. So they called him back to do some teaching, which of course was quite right. Now that was the point at which he came back to, England, uh, to Oxford and discovered that his little brother Charles, who was four years younger, had set up this very small band of people, the Holy Club. And you will have heard about the Holy Club. So Wesley talks about the Holy Club as being kind of the first rise of Methodism. You, you say it's just a small group of people? That well, it was brother? when Charles had it. But of course, big brother John comes back. And it would appear, well, I think we have to admit, that John Wesley was a very good organizer. And in a, in a short time, um, it's all going and other people are joining. And it seems that when it was really going well, there were about 40 members, but I don't think that was in 1729. I think that was, you know, over the time. But they were very, very disciplined. The, you have to understand that the Church of England at that time 
had a fairly lax approach to religious observance. And if you went to communion three times a year, that was okay. Now, the Wesley brothers didn't really rate that much. They thought that was pretty poor. And they and their friends went to communion every week. And they met every night to study and to pray. And they prayed every hour for a short time. So they were extremely disciplined. Um, word got out, and the powers that be in Oxford didn't really like this. It was enthusiasm. And enthusiasm in the 18th century is a bad word because it means fanaticism. Uh, and that's when the names came up, Methodists and Bible moths and all sorts of other rude names. They were, were really meant to be rude. Um, of which John Wesley selected the word Methodist later to represent what he meant by being a Christian and being well organized and being serious about your faith. Uh, the other stuff that they did, I mean, they didn't just sit around and be holy together. They visited the poor, they took uh, food to, to poor people, they visited people in prison. They were generally very good at what now we would call social work. So they were determined, motivated, and disciplined. And I think that Wesley's um, ability to organize that, at that time when he wasn't actually very old, I mean, he was only 26 or 27, um, stood him in good stead for later when he was actually getting these small societies around the country going. So how is Wesley remembered in Oxford today? Well, this church is <laughs> Wesley Memorial Church. It was not built in Wesley's time, obviously. This church was built in 1878, or opened in 1878. But it is in memory of John Wesley. And if you want to see where John Wesley first preached, if you go up New in Hall Street, turning right out of the church, there's a plaque on one of the walls there of a building that belongs to Brasenose College. And it says, Wesley first preach in this, church, in this building. But unfortunately, you can't go in. So all you can do is admire the plaque. Um, so we're very strong on heritage here in, in this church. And we really want to promote that, that this is the place where it all began. And you know, we still want to tap into the energy of Wesley, if you like, and carry out the mission. Um, if you look at the window, which is back to front from where we're sitting, the inscription round it is from Charles Wesley's hymn, and it says, Oh, that the world might taste and see the riches of his grace. And when we put that window in, in the 90s, that line, those two lines, were chosen by our minister and applauded by the rest of us as what we mean when we bring people in. So that's, that's partly how we, we remember Wesley. Um, the other thing that is remembered about Wesley is that in 1744, he preached in the university church. And if you go there, you can still see the place and they very often have a display. But he upset them so much that he, he knew he would never be preaching there again. <laughs> he preached on um, the almost Christian uh, and lambasted them for their lack of discipline, their lack of seriousness. He was a very, very serious and probably impossibly driven and focused and obsessive person. Um, great for doing what he did, but probably very hard to live with. Um, as the disastrous marriage that he contracted demonstrates. I've read where he thought of himself as an Oxford Methodist, though. Yes, he did. And he said to his brother, oh, on one occasion, oh, that I could be once again an Oxford Methodist. So I guess that there were very fond memories of that time in Oxford before, of course, the disastrous trip to Georgia in 1735, where everything went wrong. Um, and also before the 1738 
conversion experience in Aldersgate Street, which was the thing that, that set the fire alight and sent him off round the country, and without which we wouldn't be here. And we do remember that every, um, every year on May the 24th, or the Sunday nearest. We have Aldersgate Sunday, and we remember uh, Wesley and the warmed heart. There were two things about your church that very much struck me. One is uh, there's a covenant prayer that's up on the wall here, and one of the lines in it says, put me to doing, which sounds very Wesleyan to me. Yes. And then the openness, uh, I think there was a lot of discussion about keeping your church here in the center of, of the city to, to minister to people, to be available to people. And uh, in the time that I've been here, the doors have been open, people have been walking in, that also seems to me to be a very Wesleyan thing to do. That's right. And our strap line is open to God, open to all. And that's why we do try and keep the doors open actually all the week. And I was glad to see it was open today as well because I'm, I wasn't sure that it would be. But Saturday as well, which is, of course, a prime day for people passing by. What does it mean to you? Uh, to have this remembrance of Wesley, to, to have this church here in the center of, of uh, where this first rise of Methodism started. What does it personally mean to you? I think what we mean in Methodism and what we want to promote more than anything else is Wesley's acceptance of all. It's the four alls. All can be saved, all can know they're saved, all need to be saved, and all can be saved to perfection, to the uttermost. Uh, and that sounds quite technical, but what we mean is all are welcome, and we want everybody to feel that welcome. Uh, and that's why we have the doors open. But we also have other ways of welcoming people. Um, we have coffee after morning service. We have, if you come uh, tomorrow, we'll treat you to coffee. Uh, and conversation, and getting to know people. Um, and that's how we feel that we best follow in the footsteps of our Father in God, John Wesley. Well, you've certainly made me feel very welcome. Good. We've been talking with Kate Dobson at Wesley Memorial Church in Oxford. Thank you so much. Pleasure.